Before we start, we want to tell you about the official skill capped add-on that is dropping later this week. With the click of a button, we can completely upgrade your entire interface, giving you the best layout and settings for the most popular PvP add-ons, including Gladius, Omnibar, Weak Auras, and so much more. Trust us, it might completely revolutionize your gameplay, and you definitely don't want to miss out. Our add-on plus our entire UI package will be available to download on skillcap.com as early as the 3rd of May. And while you're there, you can even preview everything we offer and learn more about our 400 rating gain guarantee so you can get the rank you truly deserve this season. Anyway guys, let's get started. Season 4 is finally here and with it we got a whopping 2 changes. Anyway, we've made more changes to our tier list than Blizzard has done to PvP in the past few weeks. And today, we're going to break everything down for the new season. As always, let's kick things off with the melee we expect to do really well in the early season. First up is Windwalker Monk, who we expect will be making its return to the S tier alongside Demon Hunter, of course. As we explained in our preseason predictions, Windwalker Monk was lucky enough to see the return of its strongest PvP tier set, which should give the spec a noticeable power spike in the next few weeks. The returning tier set will give monks even more burst damage, which is pretty crazy to think about since their burst was already scarier than a phone call from your ex. Overall though, Windwalker Monk just seems to be a very flexible melee and solo shuffle. In any lobby where it is the only mortal strike spec, you can pretty much guarantee going positive, which is a really big deal. And even though it's getting the same tier set as last season, Demon Hunter is definitely a winner for its ability to glimpse immune another set of nerfs. We don't have much to say, but it's pretty remarkable how Demon Hunters continue to dominate in every single bracket. Seriously, there could be a nuclear explosion and somehow DH would survive. Well, what happened? DH damage somehow seems broken right now, and with some of the best mobility and micro CC in the game, it will be sticking around as one of the best overall specs in solo shuffle. Next up, let's talk about Assassination Rogues. Toward the end of last season, we actually predicted that Asa would become an A-tier spec, which was met by some early criticism, and rightfully so. The spec was rather dormant on North America since Season 1, but in the month leading up to the end of Season 3, it skyrocketed on the ladder in both regions. See? We're smart, right? Right now, only a week into the season, it's the most represented rogue spec at high ratings. So for the meantime, we're sticking with our previous prediction. The only thing that might worry Asa Rogue mains is the potential rise of Preservation of Ochre, who, as we predicted, are doing incredibly well in the early season and might actually become the meta healer. But as long as you can dodge all the lizards and ret paladins, you should be fine. So despite maybe being a bit more lobby dependent, we still think Asa is looking strong. With our winners sorted, we have a few wildcard predictions for Season 4. First up is Feral Druid, who we will be moving up a tier for this update. Feral is one of the hardest specs to rank, as it seems to actually do quite well at the highest end of the ladder, but has a pretty intense learning curve that can make it unfriendly at lower ratings. But if you ever want to get an update on the state of Feral, just pay attention to Tony Feral's Twitter account. If you haven't seen him tweet in a while, you can guess Feral is in a good spot. All jokes aside, we expect Feral Druid to gradually feel a bit stronger as more players learn to abuse wild attunement. In shorter games, Heart of the Wild gets insane value as Feral, granting 30% faster cyclone casts which can be used to quickly snowball damage. So if you can master those clones, you can climb on Feral. The only other wild card is Outlaw Rogue, who we are also moving up a tier. Outlaw has a similar problem as Feral, being really good at high ratings but relatively weaker down the ladder. One key detail worth discussing is that Outlaw has an important stat breakpoint at 40% crit, which gives them 100% crit chance with Between the Eyes when the Ruthless Precision buff is active. With the massive jump in item level this season, it should be much easier to hit this breakpoint, allowing Outlaw Rogues to have a better distribution of secondary stats. That brings us to our updated solo shuffle tier list for Season 4. Because there really wasn't much tuning, not much has changed. Both warrior specs are getting different tier sets this season, but we highly doubt it will change their relative rankings. You could argue that ARMS might be a tier lower since it lacks some of the kill power as the other A tiers, but it still seems to be a pretty consistent spec in solo shuffle. Both DK specs seem to be underwhelming in the bracket, but for different reasons. Unholy continues to feel a bit lackluster on the damage end and feels incredibly fragile in deep dampening. Even though Frost is getting a really good tier set this season, we fully anticipate that it will have the same problems as always, being too restricted by a setup based playstyle, which doesn't work very well when your partners have the attention span of a goldfish. Anyway, for the meantime, this is how we're predicting the Season 4 meta to shape up in the coming weeks. Now though, let's move on to range DPS, starting with three big winners. First up is Balanced Druid, who we are predicting will be the best overall range DPS this season. 
Boomkins have one of the best tier sets now, which not only gives them more front-loaded burst damage every Eclipse, but also gives them more star surges during their burst window. Together, this will make Boomkins setups feel a bit scarier than before. On top of this, Boomkins are another clear winner when it comes to item level increases. Last season, Boomies were already running around with 40% haste, which means this season they can opt to have even more or budget some of their secondaries into versatility or mastery, giving them more damage and survivability. In the next few weeks, we expect Boomkins to do exceptionally well as most games are lasting to that crucial two minute mark where the second use of Incarn is often enough to close out games. Aside from Boomkin, we'll be moving two mage specs up a tier for now. The first is Fire. Of course, we could point out the obvious cheese when it comes to their gimmicky AoE build, which is an absolute nightmare for any lobby with pet classes. But even with their more standard build, Fire Mages seem to be in a much better position compared to the past. Their damage output can be incredibly high, especially in caster-heavy lobbies where it's easier to benefit from Flame Cannon. We're also going to be moving Frost Mage up a tier since our last update. Frost is another spec that will likely benefit hard from item level increases, as it's already had high haste from last season and will be able to afford even more versatility or mastery this season. And even though Frost isn't getting a new tier set, it was one of the few specs that only wards two-piece last season, so it will have a slight gearing advantage early on. With our winners sorted, let's move on to the one spec we expect to see less of this season. Destruction Warlock will be moving down a tier, but don't panic, Destro will still be very good. But with the loss of its Season 3 tier set, Destro won't be the Giga Broken Wizard we saw a few months ago. Instead, it will be more in line with some of the other metacasters. Even though it's still very early in the season, people have already seemed to migrate off of the spec, causing representation to tank. But again, we don't want to suggest that Destro is completely dead, but it's definitely not going to be as scary this season. It will continue to have lots of key advantages in the bracket, including lots of instant cast damage, and its new tier set might even make Chaos Bolt build slightly more appealing. Anyway, for the meantime, we will be putting Destro on the respectable A tier. That brings us to our updated range tier list, and as you can tell, a few things have changed. Overall, we expect Boomkin to be one of the most dominant specs across Solo Shuffle and 3v3 once players get access to its 4 set. Devastation Evoker is one spec we're keeping our eyes on. They will be losing last season's tier set, but we think this might be offset by overall mastery increases, which might bring their burst damage back in line with what we saw in Season 3. We're also keeping our eyes on Shadow Priest. For now, we're sticking it back on the B tier since its tier set seems to be worse than last season, but right now the spec is actually doing alright on the high end of the ladder. You might notice we have a lot of specs listed on the B tier, and this doesn't mean that they are bad, but right now many of them simply have better spec options within their class. Alright, now to the exciting part, healers, where there are some pretty big shifts happening in the meta. Right now, Preservation of Ochre seems to be the standout flavor of the month spec and will be soaring its way to the S tier. Preservation was one of the biggest winners from this season's tier set lottery, getting its game-breaking season 1 tier set once again. From more reversion healing to instant cast living flames, evokers have quickly become a massive wall to deal with in solo shuffle. And if there's one thing we've learned after almost two years of Dragonflight, it's that to be a good healer in solo queue, you need to do one of two things. Either make your team immortal or help your team win, and Preservation Evoker can definitely do both, especially with its impressive damage. The preservation wave that started in Season 3 seems to have finally made it to Reddit, so say hello to what might be the best healer for Season 4. Now, we did say at the start of this video that there were only two specs to see changes in Season 4, and Disc Priest was one of them, getting an atonement buff for what seems like the tenth time in a row. At this point, it's become a bit of a meme, because Disc Mains seem to just want more healing on penance or shields, but Blizzard seems to be forcing atonement down everyone's throats like a mother bird feeding its babies more worms. Anyway, we'll be moving Disc up at least one tier for the time being to join a bulk of other healers, but we're going to be a bit cautious since every season it seems like Disc starts out strong and then slowly crumbles to the weight of late season damage. But even if Disc winds up being a flop, Holy has become a very strong option in the past few months and will be moving up half a tier. Now, as a bit of a disclaimer, Holy is much better in actual 3v3 compared to Solo Shuffle, but it's still shaping up to be quite strong in the bracket, especially as more players are learning to play with Lightwell, which is kinda like Resto Druid Treants on steroids. Its main downside is that it really gets crushed by dampening, which can be a big hurdle in these early season games which tend to go the distance, but as damage continues to grow over the coming weeks, we could see Holy feeling pretty good. Anyway, with our winners sorted, let's go over the only healer to get nerfed in the patch. To many players, Fist Weaver is a controversial spec, and it just seems a bit wrong that this thing can run at you all game and heal while doing damage. 
Anyway, Fistweaver saw a minor nerf to Ancient Teachings, which is the passive that converts damage to healing. After talking to a few rank 1 healers, we don't expect this change to suddenly tank it into the ground, and we should be clear that Fistweaver is one of those specs that tends to be best at the highest ratings, but right now, Casted Monk is so laughably bad that Fistweaving seems to be the only option to be truly competitive. Now before we wrap up, we'll be making one final change to our healer tier list. For now, we'll be moving Holy Paladin back to A tier. Overall, Paladin is very tricky. It's definitely strong into some lobbies, but we definitely recognize that it seems very easy to train by melee. And right now, Preservation of Ochre just seems so strong that we really can't justify having Paladin on the same tier. And of course, with the continued popularity of Rhett, being a Holy Paladin can feel a bit awkward because of double forbearance. So as a very lobby dependent healer, Holy Paladin will be moving down a tier. That brings us to our updated healer rankings for Season 4 where we predict dragons will reign supreme. Now even though we didn't talk about Resto Druid, we still expect them to be good, but the continued rise of evokers could present a big issue as AoE dispels definitely make Resto feel very sad in solo shuffle, which is why it will be moving down half a tier. Another spec we are monitoring is Resto Shaman. They've lost a really good tier set, which seems to have hurt their healing output quite a bit, but we will make sure to update you if we think they need to go down a tier. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries, where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you're serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Alright guys, that's it for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.